Hello everyone, I'm Daz, and this week's discussion is going to be a little different than the usual. I want to talk a little bit about the increase in sexually transmitted diseases and infections and each disease by area and what this means. One in two sexually active persons will contract an STI by the age of 25. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention estimates that nearly 20 million new STIs occur every year in this country, half of those among young people age 15 to 24. Even though young people account for half of the new STIs, a recent survey showed only about 12% were tested for STIs in the last year. The CDC estimates that undiagnosed STIs cause 24,000 women to become infertile each year. The total estimate direct cost of STIs annual in the U.S. is about $16 billion. Herpes is common. About 1 in 8 people aged 14 to 49 in the U.S. has genital herpes. About 1 in 2 people ages 14 to 49 in the U.S. are infected with HSV1, which is the typical cause of oral herpes. However, increasing numbers of genital herpes cases are caused by HSV1. Symptoms of genital herpes often go unnoticed. Most people with genital herpes, close to 90% don't know they have the infection. And globally, researchers estimate that about two-thirds of the population under the age of 50, more than 3.7 billion people are infected with HSV1. Some 140 million aged 15 to 49 are infected with genital HSV-1 primarily in the Americas, Europe, and Western Pacific. Chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis. In 2015, rates of the three most common reportable STIs, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and syphilis reached a record high level. The approximately 1.5 million reported cases of chlamydia represent the highest number of annual cases of any condition ever reported to the CDC. While the CDC and the U.S. Preventative Services Task Force recommend annual chlamydia screening screenings for sexually active young women ages 15 to 24. Fewer than half of eligible women are screened according to the guidelines. Young people aged 15 to 24 accounted for 65% of chlamydia diagnosis and 50% of gonorrhea diagnosis in 2015. During 2014 through 2015, rates of syphilis in both men and women increased in every region of the country. From 2013 to 2015, the reported gonorrhea infections increased each year. In 2015, a total of 395, 216,000 cases were reported for a rate of 123.9 gonorrhea cases per 100,000 population. In women, undiagnosed and untreated chlamydia and gonorrhea can lead to pelvic inflammatory disease. According to the CDC, one in eight women with a history of PID experience difficulties getting pregnant. Hepatitis. The CDC estimates that approximately 850,000 persons are living with hepatitis B in the U.S., although other studies have estimated this number to be as high as 2.2 million. The rate of new hepatitis B infections has declined by approximately 82% since 1991. Of the more than 3 million people living with hepatitis C, 3 out of every 4 are baby boomers born from 1945 to 1965. Baby boomers are 5 times more likely to have hepatitis C than other adults. According to the CDC, 1.1 million people in the U.S. are living with HIV, and 1 in 7 of them don't know it. In 2015, 39,513 people were diagnosed with HIV infection in the U.S. in 2015. In 2013, an estimated 42% of Americans living with diagnosed HIV were age 50 and older. 25% were age 55 and older, and 6% were age 65 and older. In HPV, researchers estimate that at least 80 percent of sexually active people will have an HPV infection at some point in their lifetime. The CDC data for 2013 through 14 shows that about 42 percent of men and 40 percent of women aged 18 to 59 had genital HPV at the time. HPV is responsible for 31,500 cases of cancer each year, including nearly all cases of cervical, anal, about 75% of vaginal cancer, 70% of oral, pharyngeal cancer, and 69% of vulvular cancer. And aside from those common places, for people to be infected are cervix, vagina, vulva, penis, anus, and the back of the throat. Some other causes can be non-sexual like tobacco or alcohol, but most of the time HPV goes away by itself within two years and does not cause health problems because it's thought that the immune system fights it off. However, more than nine of every ten cases of cervical cancer is caused by HPV. About 300,000 women are diagnosed with cervical precancers or abnormal cells on the cervix that can lead to cancer that require treatment. Nearly 11,000 cases of cervical cancer are caused by HPV. 
over 4,000 women died from the disease, and cervical cancer was once the leading cause of cancer deaths among women in the U.S. HPV doesn't only affect women. Nearly four out of every ten cases of cancer caused by HPV occur among men, and every year in the U.S. over 13,000 men get cancer caused by HPV. So those are the stats that I read. I got them from various sources, most of the CDC and the Sexual Health Statistics website, and I'll have the links in the description, but I just wanted to share those stats with you. I found them rather alarming. There's plenty of articles out there you can read where it talks about the rise of STDs in different regions and areas for several reasons. There was even something I saw not too long ago where they talked about linking certain music festivals to a rise in herpes and such. And it's not too surprising. I believe that when people are out having a lot of casual sex, they're opening themselves up a lot of times to the potential risk of getting an STD. And not everyone gets tested all the time. Maybe they do it once and that's it, or not as often. Personally, I, as a believer, don't believe in having sex outside of marriage, so I'm abstinent and celibate. But for those that do choose, they must, I would say, use safety because it is a health risk. And there's a lot of people who aren't even taking those safety precautions, and even then people can never be too sure. There's a lot of people who could be carriers but may not show up on them. And I never really thought about how bad things were really, but I've met a lot of people who tell me like, oh yeah, they've had a strain of HPV, or they have those abnormal cells. And just kind of looking at the link between that and cancer to me is alarming, as well as even how some of these diseases can cause infertility. I do think from a Christian standpoint, it is a form of the wages of sin being death and judgment, but I think we'll continue to see a rise in this. And I just wanted to let you guys know this is the reality, at least in the United States. Thank you for listening, and I hope that everyone has a wonderful rest of their week. Take care and God bless.